In the program of events of God's kingdom, we are in the era of grace, a time when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. This year, Christian Faith and Fellowship Mission's annual December retreat focuses on our readiness towards this great occurrence. Be ready in this end time. And yes, arising with in this video, we bring to you the recording of our timely and inspirational messages in the 2023 annual December retreat tagged Be Ready in This End Time. We hope this message blesses, inspires, and gets you ready for the conversion of all kingdoms into the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. Don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and families. Be blessed.
Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you. We want to bless you. We honor you for all what you have been doing for us. We adore you, O oh our God. You are our Alpha and Omega. You have been the beginning and the ending. Father, we lift up your name. We appreciate you, O oh Lord. May thy name be exalted, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, you've won us through the current stars ministrations that we shouldn't go back to those things we've left behind. Lord God of heaven, this morning speaks to us. Speak to us. Breathe life unto us. Restore our souls. Save souls. Revive us, O Lord. Father, do it for us in Jesus' name. And I arrest every soul, wherever you are, at the sound of my voice. Be arrested towards godliness in Jesus' name. And I declare those spirits that deprive us of God's blessing. Therefore, I take authority over you. I'm a man of authority. I bind you. I scatter your operations over our life this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, speak to us. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter number 12 from verse 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through the dry places seeking rest and findeth not. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, sweat, and garnished. Then goeth he, and take care with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and do it therein. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto these wicked generations. We are going to read again. Let us open our Bible to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. Second, second Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 2 from I'm reading verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the law and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worth with them than the beginning. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for judgment and free indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy other two or three witnesses. Of how much sure punishment support ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden under the foot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and on all the things and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that had said, Vengeance belonged unto me. I 
Why will recompense, said the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Praise the Lord. We are also reading Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 again. Hebrews 3, 12. Hebrew 3 12. Take it, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil act of unbelief in departing from the living God. John chapter 6, verse 66. John chapter 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back. And walk no more with him. Praise the Lord. With all the verses we've read, I think you should be acquainted with the topic that we want to consider this morning. And the topic is danger of backsliding. Danger. When we say danger, you all know when someone says something is dangerous. That is to say that such thing can harm, can destroy, can do anything whatsoever. Particularly, look at life wire. Uh, the PH, is it PH here or let me call them NEPA, the former NEPA. If there is going to be a life wire or the connection somewhere else, there is always a caption to warn people that this place is only meant for staff. So, not staff are not allowed to enter. They will not be gained, given opportunity to see whatever they are doing over there because danger is looming over there. Therefore, when you look at bus leading, bus leading is when somebody, somebody who is vibrant for the Lord before, somebody that prays and devil and all his, you know, hosts and co-hosts, they will be fleeing here and there. Now that person now decides on his own that I don't want to follow Christ again. And unfortunately, it's a great malady today. Look at our midst. We have some of us even amongst our leaders, among the members of choir, and even the whole congregation. We can point, we can mention some of our colleagues that were here with us last year. Where are they today? They've gone back to the world. Many of them just need to misunderstanding between them and another person. You will see then that the Spirit of God has told me that I should move out, I should move out from Christian faith. It depicts that those ones that are moving now, they are what? They've gone back to the world. They are past leading. Gradually, they are going into the world. And many of them, they fail to understand that the moment you live where the truth word of God is being preached, where you are being given opportunity to say nothing but the truth, because of one thing or the other, you now say, oh, Spirit of God has spoken to me. You know, personally, me, I don't normally believe all this uh, Spirit of God. So I'm saying, uh, Spirit of God told me. Spirit of God told me to do this. Spirit of God told me to do that. I don't normally believe. If I bring out my Bible, I judge it critically to examine what you are saying Spirit of God is telling you to do. You are telling me that Spirit of God told you to drive away your wife and get another one. Is that Spirit of God? And unfortunately, most of us, we believe all those spirits. And gradually, we are moving out of faith. The Lord will restore us in Jesus' name. Because of our time, I want us to consider the signs of backsliding. You know, I'm very sure I'm not a medical person. A person is sick. So, you now approach a clinic or a medical practitioner. They will ask you, so how do you feel? You are the one that will tell you, I had a dick. I couldn't eat. So from your, you know, confession or what you've told him or her, the doctor or the medical professional will now say, okay, that means you're having malaria. What are the signs? You can't just approach any medical practitioner and tell him that, please just treat me. They will ask you. They will question you. What are those things? What are those things you, 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 you know, you discover? So also we want to see Number one is love, lust of first love for God. Let us open our Bible to Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, 
I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Any Christian that you see that does not possess this first love again, I want to tell you critically that that person has gone back to the world. I could remember in those days when I gave my life to Jesus, the law was there. Most of you also, you can testify to those love you had in those days. Anytime there is program, you will join, you will be happy. There was a time, I think, was it not 1991? Either, yeah, I think it, it, should, it should be 1992. We want to add, you know, want to have youth conference. And I don't have money, you know, to travel from my village down to Adwekiti there. You can't imagine, I sold my textbooks. Just for me to come and attend that program. Because that love was burning. So when you see a Christian, that, that love is no longer there. You know, now, if he asks us that, let us come to retreat. Because that love is no longer there. See, ah, I don't have money. Ah, look at it. Something for me now to, you know, to pay a transport fare for my career from Lagos, from wherever you are, to Adore Kitty. I don't have the money. But unfortunately, let there be wedding ceremony in Lagos from Adore Kitty here. You, these people, some of us here, you will go and look for money elsewhere to travel down to Lagos because you want to go and eat and drink. There's something that is spiritual that can benefit you, that will take you to heaven. You say you don't have money. It shows that you lost that first law. No zeal again. No zeal again. So that is it. If you are possessing, if your life is just like this, know that you are at the verge of going back to the world. And this morning, the Lord will restore us in Jesus' name. So many of us, we've lost that love. No love to the things of God anymore. Everybody now wants to make everything. Yes, I want to be this, I want to be that. In those days, I was Z, I was go. Oh, I want to be like Wesley. I want to be like Father Nash. I want to be like John Noss. But this day, oh, I want to be like, you know, all those billionaires. Billionaires in the world. It shows that you've lost your first law. Another one is lack of passion for perishing souls. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. The Bible told us that Jesus Christ saw the multitude. I want to tell you in those days, during our Lord Jesus Christ, we have people who are, we, we have rich people then. Jesus Christ didn't see their went. He saw them that, oh, these people, they are the verge of going to hell. Oh, let me tell you what, one American evangelist is late now, D.M. Moody. He said, when I see young men by their thousand going in the way of death, I feel like falling. And if at the feet of Jesus, we prayer and tear to win and save them. This is uh, dear Moody. He said when he saw in those days, when he, when, when he saw those youths in their thousands, do you know that this generation now we have youth in their millions going to the will of the of the world, perishing. When I was young, if I hear that somebody dies in those days, I won't be able to sleep alone. But this generation, our youth, they will kill their girlfriend and the abbot will tell them, be sleeping with this lady for the next seven years, uh, seven days. What happened in Niger area, sometimes ago, was not last year, either last year or this year. That guy killed that lady. After killing her, she was still sleeping, having sexual intercourse with that corpse. During our own time, if we hear that somebody dies, we will run away. Before I was delivered, it was through the grace of God, it was after my conversion. But this, our generation, people are so wicked, they are so godless to such an extent that, you know, imagine, kill your fellow man being. But at the end of the day, that guy slept with the lady, with the cops the first day, second day, third day, maybe the fourth day. The, you know, the co-tenant in that apartment, they discovered that a, 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 a you know, offensive odors was, you know, coming from that particular flat. They approached him. They called police. They came. After arriving, the young guy said, don't worry, I will give you 3.5 million. So these are the things that are happening in the whole world today. But unfortunately, instead of us to have passion for these people who are dying, going to hell, but we also we are envy there. Ha, look at that young guy. He just bought one main bash. Oh, Ben's GLE. Oh, if you see that Ben, oh, that GL. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, I, want, I will make money. 
how you be like that. I want to be. I want to buy pants. I want to buy this. I want to buy that. But these people, they are drifting into her. They are on their way at the verge of slipping down to her. But they are the people we are what? We are envy. Instead of us to have passion for them. But here would he said, he fell at the feet of Jesus Christ and cried with prayer to rescue them. So any Christian who lost that very passion for souls that are perishing, that person is at the badge of war, going back into the world. I could remember in the 90s, when I gave my life to Jesus, I left, I think, I left program here in Adokiti. I was traveling back to Akure. I saw Masquerade. Nobody with me. I was crying. I was crying. Shedding tears for them. Why? Because that passion for perishing soul was there. But today, no passion again. Sinners are dying every day. I want to tell you conveniently that millions of souls are dying every day. Millions, conveniently, globally, throughout the world. Visit all our general hospital, private clinic. That was killing them, sending them to where? Even among Christians, look at the way Christians are dying. But if Christian dies, he has the hope of God going to heaven. But look at all these unbelievers dying every day. In thousands, in millions, look at those horrible things they are doing. And at the end of the day, Christian, do not receive why Christ Jesus will tell you to be here just to rescue them, to save them. But no passion again. You are not moved again with whatever we see. God will deliver us in Jesus' name. I say God will deliver me in Jesus' name. Another sign is when a soul, a Christian is one that loves this very present evil world. Later on, I will tell you what Polika said about Demas. When you see a Christian that is loving this present evil world, know for sure that that Christian is what? He's going back to the world. In fact, when I came, I now discovered, I don't know whether it's the new trends amongst our youths. I saw them, some of them, they have their hair style, they remove this side, they remove this side again, they now leave it. Are you now telling me you are born again? You are not born again. You are not saved. When I gave my life to Jesus, I removed, I used to do what they call punk in those days. Uh, there, is, there, there was another hairstyle there. We call it uh, Jimmy Carter. We used to have that hairstyle in those days. But immediately, 1990, when I surrendered my life to Jesus, I scrubbed it. You can't see me with any style. That is worldliness amongst our youths. You want to, yeah, as Christian, your outlook should be able to depict and convince unbeliever outside. When unbeliever, you guys are doing all those hairstyles, you also you follow them. You are being influenced by the world. You are worldly. You better repent today. So if you are type that you love these things of this world very well, you will be past life. And unfortunately, do not want thing. I just personally, sometimes I relate about these things of this world. I have a friend. That friend of mine is multi-billionaire, even in dollars. He has aircraft. From Lagos to Abuja, his aircraft is flying here and there. Having ships, have everything. When I visited him, I just look at him. With all this weight, no peace of mind. It was later I asked some times ago that he gave his life to Jesus when we were in secondary school. That the guy now, he has gone back. You know, he's now other side of that religion. You know them. But you look at him, if, you, if somebody tells you that this guy is the owner of this company, he's a multi-billionaire, you say he's a liar. With all the billions that he had. Personally, me, I believe that I don't I will never, never go and join him. But some of us, our mates that are Muslims, usually give them money. And I told somebody, do those well, they are not born again. Some of us that they call them secretary, just join them. Ah, let me also be part of those people. Every year, we give them money during uh, their Ramadan. So if you think that these things of this world is enough for you, you don't want to think about heaven anymore, I want to tell you, you will go back. Things of this world passes away. Another one is when you are upsetting yourself in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. The Bible told us we should not what? Forsake assembly of ourselves. Look at us. If I ask you people, if I ask you now to look back to see empty seats, why? Where are our members? Where are they? They feel very comfortable to absent themselves from the things of God. So it shows that they are what? 
they are going out of the way. If you find it very easy for you to be upsetting yourself from gathering of God's children, you feel comfortable at all. You can be very sure. You can be, you know, we have some of us now. They are, they are living in Adwek here. Do you know they are at home? They are at home. Why some people, they left Ibadan, they left Lagos, they left, uh, 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 what they call it, Ido, and other places. They are here. But look at people in Adwekiti. They are what? They are still at home. They know more than everybody. So it shows that they are what? They are the verge of losing their soul in hell. You will not lose your soul in hell in Jesus' name. When you don't have passion for prayer and Bible study anymore, you, even for you to read your Bible, you find it very difficult. The meeting will not attend. Even personally, I want to ask you, can you even pray on your own one hour, on your own, without anybody? Don't even come to church. Just stay at home today. Then I'm going to pray for one hour. Can you do it? If you see any Christian who cannot pray again, you can't pray, you can't read the word of God. It shows you have gone back. Bible is our food. <laughs> I can remember, I will never forget that statement. Our state of Asia in Ondo State said something sometimes ago. That he will never eat. He will never eat, take his breakfast unless he what? He studied the Bible. I heard from him. He said he will never take his breakfast until he has studied this. I could remember George Wash was in Oka Abraham Nikon. Abraham Nikon said that he's all itinerary for the day. That he woke up, was it not four or three in the morning? He said he would spend like the first, is it two or three hours with God, a whole president of America, the most powerful country in the whole world. The man said he would spend the first, was it not three hours with God in morning devotion before leaving. God will help us in Jesus' name. So if you don't have passion for prayer, you can't even pray on your own again. No time for fasting and prayer. January is coming now. Some of us, we are already weary. We are already weary. Oh, uh -uh, another 31 days of fasting. Uh -uh, you don't want to kill us. Can they declare only one day or two days? Unfortunately, we are some of us. We don't even partake in those fasting and prayer. You don't know it's for your own benefit. God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, what are the causes of fasting? Because of our time, our time is very, very short. What are the causes? Number one is lack of genuine salvation. In Acts chapter 8, verse 9 to 24, it's a story of a man that we all know about. The salmon, the sorcerer. When he saw miracles, wonders, and signs, he also said, I surrender my life to Jesus. Sometimes I wonder, how will somebody under the administration of prosperity, some of you now say, I surrender my life to Jesus, they'll be clapping for dead. Who? Who? Under administration of prosperity, there is no any remorse. And at the end of the day, you will discover those ones because they heard that if you are a Christian, there is no way you will not become billionaire or millionaire. They are the, ah, I could remember I wrote a book. That man said, a Muslim, you know, saw somebody from his church, that this person was poor before, now is now rich. He said, ah, it's like something is happening in that church. Let me also go there. I can remember I read that my book then. When I saw somebody gave testimony, that million was started rolling in. I said, hey, in this Nigeria, I said, me also, I go read that short show. When I got there, I joined there, I attended almost all the Asami victory celebration and everything. Do you know what I got by? I got BLB. I came back. I came back to my senses that the only thing is holiness and righteousness message that can take somebody to heaven. So, anybody who is not genuinely saved, you also, you are here. You are among the choristers or among the congregation. You know you are not genuinely born again. I used to tell people that my memory, my memory is very, very short, but I will never, never forget that day that I gave my life to Jesus, 1990, our former general overseer was preaching the message. Asked me, the last retreat now, the congressional hymn we sang. I don't know. I, I can't even remember. But that day, oh, my brother, my sister, I remember the song is a, a, a song. You know, I was coming from White Gamacho, from Cherubin and Seraphim then. You know, for the first time, now I had that song. Jesus is coming. I don't know uh, the English version of his. 
It's just about Yoruba. They say, Jesus, Bolo, Fupela, Yo, Ojo, Ah. You know, I was touched. Baba was preaching the message of Baba. Then was the King is coming. I will never, never forget. So if you are here, if you don't have that very genuine salvation, you can't even say particularly a particular time, a particular day. You give your life to Jesus. Unfortunately, we as human beings, our leader, they appoint you to come and be our leader in Sunday school. Come and be our leader here. Come and be our leader there. But personally, within you, you know you are yet to be born again. At the end of the day, there is no way. By the time you go back to your vomit, our leader will be thinking that, oh, that brother has gone back to the world. He has basely there. No! The person is not genuinely born again, initially. Just because we are human beings, because the person has zeal. So if you are not born again, you are not genuinely saved. There is no way you go back to your own vomit. We have some of us that are working here that are not born again. Some of our youths, you are not born again. I'm telling you. I gave my life to Jesus when I was secondary school. I know what transpired then. But you are telling me that you are born again. Are you not telling me that Christianity has now drifted? That we have another version of Christianity? Salvation, that is what the Bible says. Salvation, salvation is everywhere. In America, in Nigeria, in London. Salvation is the same thing. You can't tell me that that is why now in new generation, modern day, that salvation is different. Salvation is the same thing. Because you are not born again. That is why it was difficult for you in those days. So God will help us in Jesus' name. Another science is lack of living in the, no, sorry, cares of this world. Let us open our Bible. Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. If you have cares, your thought, anxiety, I want to be this, I want to be that. Matthew. He also that receives seed among the tongues. He see that here the world and the cares of this world and the deceitness of riches show the world and he became it unfruitful. Cares of life. You want to be this, you want to be that. I used to tell people that there is no day, let me tell you today, there is no day that this world will be convenient and comfortable for people to live in. That say, eh, eh, Nigeria, eh, think we go better one day. Let me tell you, whether you like it or not, so far that devil is still the, the one ruling this war. It will not make this war easy for people to live. Because devil wants so many people to go to hell. So if you are now, you know, your everything is anxiety. I, I used to tell people that if you are a type, God, please, I want to get married. You are praying. You meet our leader. They pray for you. God provide that person for you. You get married. At the end of the day, another challenge is ahead. You think after getting married, after getting married, everything is okay. Another challenge is for you also, you can get married one year, second year, no issue. Is that not another battle? So, so far, devil is still ruling here. I want to tell you, devil will never make things easy for people, for everybody. Don't ever think that it's only Nigeria, it's globally. If you have people over there in abroad, they will tell you there is inflation everywhere. So if your cares, you don't think, cares of the world will not allow you to work for God, to come to program. Ah, ah, this is Christmas now. I need to buy this. I need to buy that. My maid, they are using, they are using Jeep. Look at that young boy. That 21 years old boy. He's using, he's using color 20 million. God, why me? Ah, whether we like it or not, I will also make this money. Sometimes I do pity all these young girls. They ask to give your life to Jesus, you refuse. If care is not taken, your boy will use you for ritual. Ha. And they pity them. If you are here, they ask you now, young girl, you are beautiful. Give your life to Jesus. Use your beauty for God. You now say, no. Your boy will come. If it is 100 million, if you need any amount of money, they will give you. Is it iPhone 14? They will give you. But remember that that's the end of your life. You also want to be like that. You want to use iPhone. He want to use this. He want to use that because of the cares of the world. There is no way that person will not go back. Another one is lack of living in the light of eternity. You know, personally, you no. Know, let's let, let's read first. Let's read Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five, verse twenty-nine to thirty. And if the right eye offend thee, pluck it out 
and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's telling us about the dangers of hell. When you look at the way Nigerians are jetting out of the country now, the arsenal, the, the, the zeal, the energy they use in getting their visa, if they can use it, they will get to heaven. To pursue heaven, they will, they will get there. They sell their houses as if, if they get to London or US, that place, there will be no problem anymore. I know a brother that his corpse was brought from America to Nigeria. So everybody now, they said they want to jackpot. And unfortunately, I used to tell people that most of those people are jackpotting or whatever. They are, is one unrighteousness in one way or the other when it comes to their documentation. There was a day, one approach. He said, he was a Christian. I approached my younger brother. He said, I should come and help them to do some document. And I told my brother, ah, with all this lie, what if this, uh, this brother bought the plane and I eventually let the plane crash? Will this brother not go to where? Because he wants to go to Brazil, he wants to go to US. Deny all those, I, I don't know. So I don't know. Why you don't have the visions of eternity, heaven? Personally, you know, I've seen houses. I've seen houses. When I say houses, I've seen them. There was a time I saw one house of one woman. That woman is somehow the richest sometimes ago. When I saw a house, I later saw crack. The painting were fading away. But in heaven, there's nothing like that. How to tell people that, you know, when you look at where all those big men live, in Ikoyi, in Abuja, in Maitama, those places were secured. How much more God, we are God believing. If they can get everywhere, everywhere, sometimes you can't hear all those noises. But in heaven, we are God himself is living. Do you think it will be like, like what we are seeing here on earth? Oh, I will get there. And unfortunately, our parents, they were not even aware. You, your closest friends, is opposite self. Your prayer partner is another person's husband. You will fall one day. Let us open our Bible, Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 26. Who is reading for us? Oh, yeah. Proverbs 7. For she has cast down many wounded. Can you see? She has cast many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by what? By who? By her. I learned of a man of God. That man of God was anointed to such an extent that if somebody is coming, you are coming to see him. God, it's not about this when I was attending white guy that we use uh, one occultic water to wash her face to see all those things that happen to the person. This man of God, God entire with that anointing to such an extent that oil was dripping down from his palm. He was highly anointed with that power of God. Unfortunately, he was what? By women. The anointing disappeared. You call yourself a Christian, your closest friends are opposite said, are opposite said. You are a brother. Your prayer partner is sister. You will fall. So these are the causes of backsliding. And at the end of the day, when somebody falls, you don't look at Samson, how powerful this man was when he was alive. Look at it. Just a lion roared. This man was here. He tore the lion. Because of that power of God in him. But Delilah, don't worry. I will catch this. Is it not this man? Don't worry. I will catch him. At the end of the day, he caught him. You will not be caught in Jesus' name. Unequal yoke with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 40 to 18. He said we should not be unequally yoke with unbelievers. Your closest friends are unbelievers. I realize that most of us, some of these are youth that are being influenced in one way or the other, that are being worldly. 
the reason is that their friends are unbelievers. The way their unbelievers dress, the way their unbelievers, you know, behave, they copy them. And unfortunately, you see some of our sisters, they will put on short, short, scared. In those days, we condemn them. And we are still condemning it now. And it's common with our youth. They put on short, short, mini, micro, or whatever. I want to, want to belong. Because you saw them in the campuses. And let me also dress like them. Let me look so that they will not say, I'm, I, 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 I'm not swag there. I'm smart. I'm one of them. It shows you are not born again. Because the moment you are born again, you will leave all those things. If your friends, you are a member of Christian faith here, you are having friends, prayer partner with all those chapters over there, all those people over there, where they can see where trust. And there was one day, some one of them, two of them came to me. He said they want to preach to me. You put on trousers with your, what they call artificial finger lace. I said, wait, wait, wait. I began to preach to them. You can't preach to me. Why should you preach? Somebody that wore, you know, trousers with finger repenting, with pancake, everything. I preached, they say, hey, hey, you are, you are, you are preaching morality. You are doing this, you are condemning me. I said, ah. I said, when I gave my life to Jesus, nobody, you know, told me to, to remove all those things. Because naturally, we ate those things. So if you are complying with all those type of people, you will be influenced. And I pray God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Another one is the present economy situation. Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at what Jesus Christ said. 24 verse 6 to 8. Jesus said something about what is happening now, even globally in the old world. It's not only Nigeria. Don't think it's only Nigeria that is, uh, you know, that is experiencing this present economic action. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 6 to 8. And ye shall hear of wars and the rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all those things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be what? You are not reading. There, there shall be what? And pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. The present economic situation in the old world. I'm not, I'm not saying only Nigeria. The only challenge we are having is just because our exchange rate, our forest is bad. I want to tell you, like I told you the other time, as those people over there in abroad, they will tell you there is inflation. So some people now because of economic hardship, they don't want to pay their word, they are tight again. Thank God for that pastor. And thank God for our father also in the Lord that cancelled him rightly. Some of us, we don't pay tight again because of economic hardship. And uh, if care is not taken, if we allow those things, they will take us out of the way. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Because of our time, let's quickly look at dangers of going back. There is danger of going back to the war. That person will become a formidable instrument in the hand of the devil. I add it, whether it's genuine or not, that the founder of this JW, you know those JW, those people that goes up and down with, uh, with preaching, that there's no air fire, no air anywhere. That the founder, the, the leader of that movement was once a Christian. He committed sin. He sinned a, a sin in church. He was disciplined. At the end of the day, he left the church. Look at the doctrine. And that man now, do you know how many people this man has, you know, has sent to her through his messages and doctrine? That is the end of a backslider. If you backslide, then we use that person terribly. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 about Demas. He loved this present evil war. If I could remember, Polycarp, the bishop of Simeon in those days, wrote a letter to a church in Philippine that, that they should not love this present world and money. That uh, Demas, he made mention of some of those ones that were martyred, that they were martyred for Christ Jesus. He made mention of Sozim, Ignatius, Rufus, Paul, and Noza. He now finally said that Paul. Law, I'm mean, sorry, Dema love this present war. He lost money. And at the end of the day, he ended up in air. So when you look at somebody that's gone back to the war, they will now use him to war terribly. Look at that man, the founder of that movement. The man is in air. Do you know that? That's why the fact the man has gone to air, he's still bringing other people to air again. That's the end of backslide. If you backslide, I pray you not backslide in Jesus' name, oh. 
Anybody that plaster, you see the way that we use them. You see them, most of all, most of them. Don't you have some of our pastors here before? That they've driven away their wife, they marry another one. That's the what? That's signs of backsliders. That's their life. They will drive away their wife and children, they will marry another one. And unfortunately, if our leader see you and rebook you, hey, sometimes I'll be wondering, somebody who committed fornication adultery, leader now told to you that what you've done is wrong. You pick your Bible, you run away. I will not say God has called you to go and start your own church. I pity the member of those church that the man, the prospective member, the man will be sleeping with them because nobody will be able to what? To rebook them. Another one, the danger of evil spirit will be tormenting that person. Remember that what Jesus said in that matter that when the spirit is gone out of somebody, you came for deliverance. After giving your life to Jesus, by the time, maybe initially you were committing only for the, oh, it's only lying. Now you've gone back to the world, you've been leader. That person has been leader. You will see the person will know how to commit fornication. Yahoo, mention all those type of stupid sin. That person will be expert in those things. The person and demon, you've, you've been praying. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Only go fire, destroy you. Those demons, after cashing the person, in fact, I used to tell people that devil is a kind of being that does not lose hope on anybody. Devil believe that every one of us we are still coming to hell. Devil, the belief of devil is that you and I, we are still coming back to meet him here. There is a self for every one of us. So you are the one that will determine that that hello, that place oh, is not meant for me. So that's it. Sometimes you'll be wondering that why somebody in Christian faith, pastor in Christian faith, at the end of the day, will still be committing fornication. And unfortunately, the leader will talk to him. Ah, what you've done, you know, you know what's wrong now? Just step aside for a while. He said, you are persecuting me. Eh, our Gio, he does not love me. Eh, let me just leave. And at the end of the day, that will be what? That will be happy that eh, she may have said that this person is still coming back to me. That will still end up with me. You will, not, uh, you will not end up with devil in Jesus' name. Now, solution to backsliding because of our time. Number one is that remain resolute with your faith in Christ Jesus. That come what me. I am for Jesus. As far as I'm concerned, I gave my life to Jesus 1990. Till there, till I will live, breathe my last year, I will still be for Jesus. Nothing will take me out of Christianity. Nothing will take me out of faith. So remain resolute. Whatever you are passing through, believe that heaven is here for you. And not only that, that one day, Christ will take you out of this world. Whether you have money, you don't have money, you will die one day. Sometimes I fed up with the things, material things of this world. And I look at it that if I get motor, I buy this, I get houses here and there. If somebody dies, just his feet. You just dig back, 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 back. You just put the person. Back after you buy cups of maybe coffee of one million, let them put the person there. They will just cover the person. There was one man, because of this earthly thing, he said that, ah, he read a particular about, uh, you know, documentary of one person in Egypt. He said, please, he bought, I forgot, Bentley, a battery at $1,000. No, pants. He said, please, use this coffee. When I die, put me inside this Bentley. Let them bury me with the Bentley. So that when I get over there, I'll be using, I say, look at Mumu, I say, let that man come and try it in Nigeria. Let him try it in Lagos with all the security. All those area boys, well, they will remove the car, they will throw his cops away. They will steal that car. So, eternity is what is. So, what I'm saying is, be resolute. Don't let anything take you out of faith. Remain with Christ Jesus. Another one is that uh, have a strong faith that you will, well, you will soon overcome it. You will soon overcome it in Jesus' name. What are the challenges? What are the challenges? I realize that the moment you acquire a thing, it does not motivate you anymore. If you don't have a car, let me tell you, you are aspiring. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a car. Don't worry. When you buy a few of 2,000 naira, you drive from here to is it Ireje and the fair disappear. You will know that, oh, even though with this my legacy, this, or oh, this my Okada, I think I'm still better off. So, all those challenges of life you are passing through, I want to tell you, have faith. You overcome it one day. And you overcome it in Jesus' name. Another one is that expect the glorious appearing of our great God. One day is coming that Jesus will come. The Bible says, he that will come, will come. Whether you like it or not, whether the world like it or not, Jesus is coming back. Rapture will take place one day. The archangel in heaven, you know, and the maker, we blow the trumpets. We shall all leave this evil world. 
we shall be with our Lord forever and ever. It shall be so for us in Jesus' name. So before we finalize everything, another one is that endure hardship. Let us open our Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure as hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So you are a soldier of Jesus Christ. In fact, I, I, I'm a member of, you know, Title Artillery Brigade, honorary member of Nigeria and the Title Artillery Brigade there. So through that, I was privileged to have conversation with, you know, personnel and officers of Nigeria Army. You know, there was one that told me that for good five, five years, he was in the battlefront with Boko Haram's fighting there, five years. There is another friend of mine, he's, you know, he's, we used to call him, he's now, his, his rank is, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a close friend of mine. He told me he's an artillery officer. He said he was in Yobe for years, fighting Boko Haram. He said there was a time his wife traveled down to Yobe. They abandoned their family. They endure hardship. They will be inside the forest fighting. You also, you don't know, you have to endure. You don't have money today does not mean that you don't have tomorrow. Endure hardship. The message is that if you are born again, there will be no problem anymore. They are just lying. They, are they don't tell us the truth. The Bible says endure. Okay, let me read what Paul said. Let us open our Bible to, to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at what Paul said. What they experience during their own time. Let for I think, listen, read it to yourself. For I think that God has set forth all the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to the angels, and to men. We are full for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, look at it, oh, we both hunger. The apostle Lord Jesus Christ, they said they don't have food to eat. Test it. They don't even have ten enough to buy pure water, sachet water to drink. They don't have the money. He said, and, and naked. Some of you now, you buy Christmas, you buy your Christmas clothes to contribute for December retreat. You don't have money. But you know how to buy clothes for your children. You don't know how to give our, your pastors that have been pastoring for the past one year. You don't know how to give him even 1,000 naira that daddy for your year will take you. But you can buy clothes and everything for your children. But the Bible is saying that they are, were naked. They don't even have money to buy suits. Look at this, my suit. They don't have money to buy it. And a buffet. And have no Saturday dwelling place. They don't have house. Paul does not have house. They don't have a particular house. That, this one is my own mansion. Look at what they endure during their own time. And labor, working with our own hands. Be revived, be blessed. Be persecuted, we suffer it. So what are you, what are you suffering now? Most of you have houses. Most of you, you have your own, you are living your own personal, you have your own personal car, yet you are still complaining that Jesus is not, has not done you anything. Let me tell you a story of one man. The man, during the man they call it Savoral Roland, he preached against worldliness, he preached holiness. Do you know what happened to him? This man was condemned to death by burning. They burnt him. He didn't do anything, they burnt him to death. In those days in Ephesus, in Ephesus, in Asia Minor, they have a stadium where Christians have been persecuted. You know, like today we have stadium where when they are playing football, they gather themselves together. Do you know that in those days they have that all? We are the persecuted Christians. They persecute them. They kill them. They feed them to, you know, hungry lions. The one that moving most is Polika. He's a bishop of Zina. He was a very close friend, last disciple of John the Beloved. He saw John the Beloved. He was arrested. When they came to arrest all those soldiers, he told them, say, let them serve all of them food that they should eat first. Those soldiers, they were marveled that, why? That ah, this is the person that I wanted to keep, want to uh, serve them food. At the end of the day, they said, please give me just one hour, let me talk to God. And night prior to that day, God showed me a revelation. His pillow was on flame. He thought he's going to be born alive. They arrested him, they threatened him, denied Jesus. Embrace emperor. Say, no, I'm for Jesus. For 86 years, that man for 86 years, they asked him, 
deny Jesus. Say for good eight years. Jesus has never done me any evil. If I should ask you now, most of you will, you will say, God, Jesus, remember I prayed last year for something. You didn't do it. You begin to come. For good 86 years, Polycar said, Jesus has never done me any evil. And he was what? They tried him with lion. Uncle lion said, no, I am ready to die for Christ. They burnt him. The fire couldn't penetrate. They killed him. They sliced him. At the end of the day, they burnt him to ashes. He told them before the point that, please, don't keep my cops. I don't want them to come and be worshipping me. So what am I saying in essence is that we need to endure what? Persecution. We have so many of them. John Knox was born alive for not denying Jesus. He got to a time, finally, Jesus says to these people, will you also go back? Many, many, the Bible said many of them went back from following. He faced his disciple. I'm also facing my father in the Lord. Will you also go back? I'm facing you, the chorister. Will you also go back from following Jesus? If Jesus tarry, are we going to see you next year? The congregations, will you also go back? If Jesus tarry, next two, three, four, five years, will you also be a member of this commission? Will you also go back? Let us stand up on our feet. Jesus faced them. He said, will you also go back? Will you also go back as a Christian? Next year, next one year now, will you still be in the faith? Jesus said, will you also go back? Peter said, no, there is no plan. We can't go back. You are the living master. You are the living word of God. You are the way, the truth, and life. Will you also go back? Our father in the law. Will you also go back? Some of our leaders, we are there today. They've gone back. They are no longer in the church. Because they, they, they did what was wrong. And the daddy spoke to them. They packed their Lord and went. Will you also go back? I used to tell people, if you don't want leaders to discipline you, don't commit sin. Don't commit fornication. If you don't want to be disciplined. Will you also go back? Will you also go back? Will I also go back? Will you also go back? Talk to God this morning. Will you also go back? Thank you for watching this video with us. We believe you've been greatly blessed and are ready to partner with God in this end time to bring His purposes to pass. Indeed, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent alone takes it by force. Be ready in this end time. If you've been blessed by this video, don't forget to like and share it with your loved ones. And also subscribe to the channel to get more inspirational contents like this. Stay blessed by God. See you in our next video. We will break the walls. We will break the walls. We will break the walls. We will break the walls.